Hi there, Micah here, registered dental hygienist and senior burst ambassador. You know, one of the great things about dentistry is that we get to be lifelong learners. There's always new research coming out. There's always new technology coming out. And we really get to flex our muscles in that way that we get to continue learning throughout our careers about how to better treat our patients. And so in light of that, in today's segment, we are going to hear from several of our Burst Ambassadors community because one of the most fun ways to learn new things is from your colleagues. So they're going to tell us what their favorite dental analogies are, and I'm sure we're all going to learn something great. Flossing is just like working out. It takes a couple weeks to get your gums in shape. They might be sore, they might bleed at first, that's totally normal. And once you start being consistent with flossing once a day, you'll notice that bleeding and that soreness will go away and they'll feel really, really good. Just like with working out, it takes a couple of weeks. Your muscles are sore, you don't want to do it, but after you're consistent for a couple of weeks, you're not as sore anymore and it actually feels good. So get busy flossing and pretty soon your gums will be in great shape and it'll feel really good. Mr. Smith, I'm sorry to inform you, but after looking at your x-rays and your periodontal screening, it seems as if you have periodontal disease, uh, where the tartar buildup goes way down deep underneath the gums and causes the bone to deteriorate, and if we don't remove that, you may lose your teeth. Well, I, that's uh, good and all, but I really just want to whiten. Can we just do some bleaching today? Can we do that? Well, actually, bleaching teeth with periodontal conditions is like putting shutters on a house that has a rocky foundation. We need to get the foundation secure first. All right, then, uh, can we just do a regular cleaning and then bleach my teeth? No, no. Remember, we gotta fix the foundation and then we'll do the shutters. Personally, one of my favorite dental analogies, even though I've never actually used it with a patient, only friends and family, is that not flossing is kind of like going to the bathroom and only wiping the cheeks. <laughs> Hi, my name's Cindy Woodman. I'm a registered dental hygienist and a birth ambassador. I just wanted to share with you a little analogy that I've always used with patients to help them understand a little bit better about plaque. And what I would tell them is that, you know, if they'll think about eating a bowl full of oatmeal and when they're done eating that oatmeal, if they will take that bowl over to the sink and they rinse it out, they might get out any little chunky pieces of oatmeal that remain, but there's still that soft sticky film and it requires picking up the washcloth or a sponge or a little scrubby and making physical contact with all of the areas of the bowl to be able to make the bowl clean. So it's the same thing with plaque in our mouths. It requires um, conscientious flossing using that nice C shape and that taunt up and down motion along uh, the tooth surface and getting that floss down uh, not only between the teeth but below the gum line and then also using a power brush angling it so that those bristles clean in a nice sweeping motion along the gum line as well as around the whole surface of the tooth and getting some in between the teeth. That's my analogy. I hope it helps you. Have a great day. Bye. Submitted by Missy Euler. The surface area of your gum tissue is about the same size as the palm of your hand. Now, if you had an infection about that size on your arm, wouldn't you be concerned? Hey guys, Felicia here, registered dental hygienist and senior burst ambassador. And my favorite dental analogy is to compare a splinter to your the calculus underneath your gums. So a lot, everybody's gotten a splinter before and they understand that it hurts and their tissue's irritated, 
So that's kind of how I explain calculus underneath their gums to them. Um, I say, well, it's something that's chronically irritating your tissues underneath. And so when I'm cleaning it out, it's going to be like digging out a splinter underneath your skin. And that's why it hurts. But once it's removed, the tissue will heal back up around your tooth and it'll feel much better. One of my favorite submissions from this segment is from Sarah Messenger. She said that when explaining the difference between plaque and calculus to her patients, she compares it to paint. So think of it like when paint is wet, it's easy to wipe off, but when it dries, you have to have a special tool to scrape it off. It's comparable to plaque in the way that when it's in that stage, you can brush and floss and it'll easily be removed. But when it turns into calculus, that's when you have to go to the dentist and a hygienist has to use a special tool to remove it. Another great submission by Sarah Messenger is that teeth are like icebergs. The crown portion of the teeth that you can see only makes up about one third of the tooth, but the rest of the two thirds is underneath that tissue and in the bone. And that's why it's so important that you're brushing and flossing with the correct technique to make sure that you're cleaning that part of the tooth surface that you can't see. Hello, my name is Jennifer and I am a registered dental hygienist. And I'm going to share with you all one of my favorite analogies to give patients when trying to explain the need and the benefit of flossing by using a pair of pants. So if you're wearing a pair of pants that has pockets and throughout the day, you were putting things like tissues in the pockets, maybe you put a receipt in your pocket. And then at the end of the day, you come home, you're tired, you throw your pants off into the laundry and they end up going into the washing machine. And then the next time you wear those pants, you put your hands in your pockets and you start getting out little pieces of receipts, little pieces of tissues, um, little things that were left behind. So the washing machine is like the toothbrush. It's gonna remove a lot of what you put in your pockets, but it's just not gonna be able to get at all the little pieces that are hiding deep in your pockets. So if you would have reached in and taken the receipt or the tissue out of your pocket before putting it in the washing machine, then it would be gone. And that's what you do when you're flossing. So flossing gets down deep into the pockets of your gums and between your teeth to remove all the food that you've accumulated throughout the day. So it's very important to floss every night before you go to bed. So I hope you've learned something. I hope that makes sense to you. And I hope that you're all flossing every night. Hi, my name is Judy. I'm a new birth ambassador, but I've been a dental hygienist for over 39 years. And one of my favorite dental analogies is when a new patient presents themselves wanting some restorative and or cosmetic work done on their teeth, but they aren't aware that they have existing periodontal disease. So what I try to tell them is that it's important that if they choose to repair their teeth, they might be very, very happy with the way they look, but if they don't address the periodontal issues first, it's like building a house on quicksand that the teeth will come out looking beautiful, but they will eventually not have a foundation to stand on. Think of your routine cleanings as a massage for your gum lines. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your spa day. Free facial, courtesy of the Ultrasonic Scaler. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this segment and learned a new way to help educate your patients and to help them better understand the importance of and how to take care of their teeth. And so I am just going to leave you with this saying submitted by Michelle Revick, which is, you only have to brush and floss the teeth that you want to keep. <laughs>